coming up on this week's show. With spring around the corner and more and more people buying or looking at buying pre-owned RVs, we decided to bring you a couple of stories that just may answer some of those used RV questions you may have. First, Jeff Johnston helps a friend with an inspection and repair of his newly purchased used RV. Then, if that camping trailer you're looking at happens to be a pop-up tent trailer, we'll show you how simple it is to get a new, complete, or partial canvas replacement. Rolling on TV is sponsored by Carefree of Colorado, celebrating over 45 years of RV awning innovation. Closed captioning, we're available is sponsored by Forest River. Begin the journey. There's very few days as exciting as the first day that you bring home your new or slightly used trailer. This one is a 1996 Kit Road Ranger. The owner, Dan Mountjoy, has been going around and doing a little bit of inventorying on it to find out what has to be done to it. Now, it doesn't matter whether it's new or used, there's things that you're going to have to do to a trailer before you take it out for your first run. You got to check the safety things, you got to check the functions, make sure everything's working like it's supposed to, make sure all the parts are there and up to date. And that's what we're going to do with this trailer. We're going to go through it and show you just some of the most important things that we have to do. We aren't going to cover all the, the interior fabric and curtains and all that stuff. Mainly, we're going to be looking at things relating to safety and mobility because it doesn't much matter if the refrigerator works if you can't get the trailer to the campground and back safely. So we're going to take a look at those things and see what it takes and go through the process of getting this little guy ready to go. The propane connection equipment on this is definitely original to the 1996 model. Uh, this is the pre, uh, you know, easy hand wheel removal ones. So we've got a pair of these guys that we're going to install to replace these. And we also have a new auto changeover regulator. Uh, this, is, uh, this original one is an older style. Uh, it may or may not still work, but frankly, as old as it is, it's just not worth it to try and make this work. We can add one of these and it'll be good to go for a long time. We've removed the cylinders to clear up access to the plumbing parts. The old regulator came off easily, but we needed washers to make the old screws fit the new model due to slightly shallower mounting holes. After removing the optional adapter fittings, the new Acme handwheel equipped hoses screw into the new regulator. The red substance is thread sealer factory pre-applied to the fittings. After assembling the parts, we cracked open the tank valve and checked for leaks with a soapy water solution. We only found one fitting that needed to be tighter. This completed the propane supply part of our once over. Next up was inspecting the brakes and associated hardware and repacking the bearings. After safely supporting the trailer frame with jack stands, we broke the lug nuts loose, raised the trailer a bit farther, and finished removing the wheels. While the brakes are used and rusty inside, the components are still functional, so we brushed the assembly out and left it as is for now. Both the bearing races and seal surfaces looked good. After repacking the wheel bearings, probably our most important step in the trailer work process, we reassembled the unit with new grease seals torqued the castle nut to spec, and carefully tapped the dust cap in place with a soft mallet. We'll check the lug nuts again after a few miles on the road. It takes a while for them to fully seat and remain tight. There's something else kind of interesting we learned while messing around with the wheel bearings. The tires show an awful lot of tread. They seem to be in pretty good shape from a tread standpoint, but when we inspect the DOT numbers here on the sidewall, according to the numbers, this tire was manufactured in the 19th week of 1995. It's a 1996 trailer, so it's quite possible these are the original tires from the trailer. And to say that they have passed their age of use uh, is tremendously understating it. Plus, if you look really close here, besides the fact that they have that the age indicates they're too old, 
you check out the sidewall here and the cracking and corrosion on the rubber is really pretty incredible. So uh, stop at the tire shop. That's going to solve another major problem for uh, mobility on this trailer. Before we head for the tire shop is the right time to get the weight distributing hitch properly set up. This process works best on a flat level surface, but we may do with our slightly sloped gravel driveway. Ideally, we want the hitch head adjusted so the truck and trailer are parallel or more or less in line with each other. Okay, item number one on adjusting a weight distributing hitch like this is to set the truck and the trailer more or less at the static ride height where you'd like them to be when they're going down the road. Now, both of them are sitting fairly level here. We've adjusted the, the, uh, the hitch jack until the trailer you know, looks pretty good cosmetically relative to the truck. And it's a little tough to measure on a, uh, a rough surface like this, but we'll start by inserting the jack or insert the head in there, do a test fit on it and see how it looks. And then if we have to adjust it up and down, we can work from there. We removed the two large mounting bolts and positioned the head up one hole in the mount. This produced the kind of truck and trailer alignment we wanted, but further adjustments may be needed after a test drive. Next, we cleaned and installed the spring bars and attached the chains to the frame mounted hangers. The bars must be tight enough to distribute the hitch weight, but not so tight that they stiffen the ride. You'll need to adjust the chain hangers with trial and error. Once it's set right, you're good. Next up, a stop at the tire shop right after these commercial messages. Stay tuned. Aquacam Tossins, so fast and easy to use, it could seem like a game. Someone once said, the camping doesn't really start until the RV awning comes out. Whoever said that really knew what they were talking about. Carefree of Colorado, celebrating 45 years of RV awning innovation. For more information, visit our website at carefreeofcolorado.com. Welcome back to Rolling On TV. Let's continue our look at making a few modifications and adjustments to a used travel trailer to get it ready for life on the road. Next stop, a visit to a tire shop to get some new Goodyear Endurance trailer tires installed. Final step of our project today. We're here at Lewis's Tire Service in Oregon City, Oregon to install a new set of Goodyear Endurance Radial Tires. These are Goodyear's brand new trailer tires designed specifically for trailer use. Now these are made in the United States, so it's none of that imported tire stuff that you see on a lot of products. In fact, it's kind of a testimony to the original Goodyear tires that were on this trailer for in excess of 20 years that we made it all the way down here to the shop without the tires going bad on us. We'll show you what we're going to be doing, including balancing the tires. Very important step. As you're going about your regular maintenance procedures with your trailer, always remember to have your trailer tires balanced. Now there's nobody riding in the trailer to feel if it's vibrating or shaking all over the place. However, with the tires balanced, you get a couple of significant advantages. One, there's a lot less vibration transmitted through the axle, the bearings, and up into the body of the trailer. It rides smoother. And number two, the tires will last a lot longer. Instead of bouncing along the ground because they're out of balance, they're going to ride smoothly. The tread has a better contact with the ground. So, Keep it in mind, balance your tires in your trailer, they'll last longer, you'll never regret the investment. One of our wheels had more lateral run out than it should, so it required more weight, in excess of six ounces, to help it run true. 
The other tire and wheel combo was fine and called for approximately two ounces to balance. When you get new tires for the trailer, for the ones that are on the ground, don't forget the spare, because if you got a bad tire on the spare and you get a flat, you're taking a risk. Add the extra tire to your purchase, you won't go wrong. The new endurance tires look great on the trailer. Now when we selected the size to use for the trailer, we bumped up one size from ST205 75R14 up to ST215 75R14. Now the 215 tires are a little bit larger diameter, a little bit wider, but they fit the opening just fine. They fit the wheels obviously, and they, they don't contact the wheel well. There's plenty of clearance around here. And the advantage to jumping up one size like this is that the new tires have approximately 200 pounds of extra payload capacity per tire. Or in other words, we have another 400 pounds of weight carrying capacity for, for the entire trailer on the axle. Now this doesn't change the gross axle weight rating on the trailer. It just means we have a little, little room to spare, a little bit of wiggle room as far as piling things into the trailer. And there's less chance that we're gonna be overloading the tire. However, these are the new endurance radials, so uh, we have a lot more confidence in these tires than we do on some of the oh, imported ones that you see running around on the road today. It's a pretty smart investment for a trailer. With the tires good to go, brake lights checked, and the rest of the projects done on the trailer, it's ready to hit the road for the new camping season. A day or two of small projects can make a big difference in keeping things together and trouble-free en route to your favorite campsites. Buying a used trailer, you're always going to wind up with a certain amount of things that have to be done to it. If you're very lucky and you get one that's a turnkey operation, terrific. Otherwise, you may wind up with an older rig like this. It needs a little bit of help along the way. Once it gets done, of course, and you can be ready for relatively smooth RV sailing and head out for your first weekend knowing that you can get there and things are going to be safe. To learn more about anything you've seen on this episode, log on to RollingOnTV.com. Forest River, we not only build great RVs, we build award-winning RVs. Check out our complete product line at forestriverinc.com. Forest River, begin the journey. At Norcol, we realize that some of your favorite RV destinations are off the grid. And Norcol refrigerators are uniquely designed with that RV experience in mind. We call it Freedom Unplugged. To learn more about our Norcol RV refrigerator line or to find a dealer near you, visit our website at norcol.com. If your pop-up camping trailer looks like this and your wife and neighbors are complaining, then it's time to contact the folks at Canvas Replacements. This week we take you to Loyal, Wisconsin. You know, dairy country where they make all those great cheeses. But Loyal, Wisconsin is also home to Canvas Replacements, the leading manufacturer of pop-up tent camper canvas. I always wondered how someone can take an old canvas that looks like it came from the Civil War, all ripped and shredded with pieces missing and turn out an exact replica using today's modern materials. Well, we'll show you. We started in, in 1973 as a company. Um, we had bought out uh, a bunch of surplus materials from another camper company that went out of business in 1973 that was Tradewinds. Included in that inventory of miscellaneous hardware parts were a whole semi-trailer load of obsolete tent camper canvases. They were brand new canvases in bags that were for Tradewinds campers that had been made in 1963 and 64. And uh, my dad and I thought those were pretty worthless, but we hauled them back here with the rest of the stuff anyway. And after a few weeks, people were calling 
the office in, at Tradewinds and being directed to us to get a new tent for their 10-year-old Tradewinds camping trailer. Uh, it began to dawn on us, uh, God kind of beat it on my dad's head that this is kind of the direction you need to go. And over the next couple of years, we started specializing in selling replacement tent camper canvases. But more and more, we started, we expanded our sewing operations and started making new tents from scratch for ones that we couldn't find a source on. And over the years, we have, uh, other companies have gone out of business and uh, we've just expanded on that. At this point, we can, we can make a new tent for, for any camping trailer and we have for, I think, back to a 1920-something cozy camp to uh, campers that were made in the, in the 2000s. That, uh, and all we need, uh, at, the, at the most, all we would need would be the, the old uh, canvas that we're replacing. And we have a staff that can take that apart, measure it, even if it's a rag, and, uh, and duplicate it and make a new tent that fits perfectly. We have patterns uh, for many, many of them. I would say in the majority of cases we do not. It's not always needed. We have patterns or sources for uh, uh, literally hundreds and hundreds of different models. We already have all the information on, on file that we need to make the new tent for them. What if we just needed a section of the old canvas replaced? Can that be done? Yeah, we need, we need the, uh, if you're replacing just a section of a, of a camper tent, we need more information so that we're able to match color and the zipper in particular where it zips to the rest of the tent. Different manufacturers use different sizes, brands, lengths of zipper and we want to be able to, if, if at all possible, to put the correct zipper on the new piece so that you will be able to zip it right to your tent without an without a issue or problem of tooth count or zipper size or whatever. And what about colors? We can make a new tent in, usually we try to stay fairly close to the original color uh, if that's possible, if it's available. If a customer would like a different color, a gray instead of a tan, uh, many times we can work that out with them. We do have uh, several colors of material in stock that we work with all the time. And if we know what color they want, uh, or uh, if they need a sample co of the colors that we have, we're happy to send that out and, and make it a different color if they like. We'll continue our visit to Canada's Replacement right after this word from our sponsors. Wow, am I glad I used Aquacam. Maybe chili wasn't the best idea. Aquacam, the most powerful odor control available and the number one seller for over 50 years. Welcome back. As we saw earlier, there's a lot that goes into fabricating a brand new canvas for your tent trailer. And I'm still amazed at how that talented staff can virtually take a bunch of rags and meticulously measure and lay out an exact pattern for a new tent unit. Kind of reminds me of a museum restoring an artifact. I asked Bob to explain the various operations that go into making a new canvas replacement. When a customer sends an old tent in, uh, the first step uh, beyond writing up the order is to, have, to spread the old tent out and take uh, measurements. I have um, an expert that uh, will measure everything out, uh, do sketches, make notes of how things need to be cut, what the finish sizes need to be. Uh, in some cases they do make a partial pattern of different uh, 
intricate parts and uh, if, if necessary take the tent apart to, to, so they know all the angles of each seam. And if, after that, the order goes to our cutting department. They cut the different pieces that are needed, the, di the, uh, the window vinyls, the zippers, the, uh, the canvas flaps, the vinyl pieces, the roof panels. And then it goes through our sewing operation where the different pieces are put together in, in, into a unit. And then the final cut down is done to make sure that the final dimensions will be correct for that camper. And then it's sewed together and put in a, inspected, put in a box and shipped to our customer. We're seeing more and more tinted vinyl windows lately. Is this becoming a standard or are clear windows still the norm? Vinyl windows that we use, we use a high quality um, 12 gauge, it's 12 thousandths thick, um, extra soft so it's, it does not crack in cold weather. And it's, uh, normally we use a dark smoke tinted. The dark smoke tinted vinyl windows started in popularity in the late 70s, early 80s. Most companies use the dark smoke tinted in their new campers, and we have that, and it's what we use the most. Some companies, like Coleman, stuck with the clear vinyl windows, and we do have that in stock also, and it's customer's choice if they would prefer uh, more light. We can use clear or if they would prefer the slightly additional privacy and a little more tinted, we have the dark smoke tinted. Once we order our new canvas, what is the normal wait time before delivery? The lead time that we have in our shop for new orders is generally about four to six weeks. During the busiest seasons of the year, obviously that stretches out when we get orders in faster than they, in the one end faster than they go out the other end, that lead time can expand to about two months. We try and keep it at, at, at uh, 60 days or less. Uh, if we need to work a little overtime, if we need to add some extra people, we'll, we'll do that to try and maintain at least uh, no more than a 60 day lead time. Do you recommend a dealer install the new canvas or is that something a trailer owner can do himself? Pop-up camping trailer owners are generally pretty resourceful. They understand their unit if it's one they've owned for a while. They understand how it goes up and down, how the canvas tucks in, and, and uh, if they've had to remove their old tent to send it to us for uh, patterning purposes, they're pretty familiar with how it goes in. So I would say most people can install their own. We're happy to advise them on that. We enclose with a new tent some generalized instructions on what they need to uh, do to install the new tent and get a good fit on it. Um, it's a lot of a lot of people do like to have it professionally installed, and in that case, they can take it to any number of RV or tent and awning shops that would be happy to help them with it. Uh, they can order it through any RV dealer or tent and awning shop, and uh, we'll be happy to ship it directly to their uh, dealer. With a new canvas, is it recommended that any water repellent or seal it be put on it? A new tent from Canvas Replacements is already water proofed on the, at the factories. I mean, the, the materials we use are all water repellent uh, when we get them. We do not recommend putting on uh, Canvac, uh, Scotchgard, or anything like that when it's new. It's not needed. Um, and for, we don't recommend it re-waterproofing until symptoms of leakage may show up in five or ten years. If the waterproofing is wearing out and the canvas is starting to get uh, wet spots on it that are soaking through, then it's a good time to uh, probably put on a quality dry water repellent treatment. Uh, we sell uh, IOSO brand products that are good for that. They have an excellent waterproof water repellent uh, spray that it is easy for the consumer to apply to uh, fabric, canvas and such. Uh, we also stock a complete line of uh, seam sealers and other things that may or may not be necessary over the years for maintaining your canvas. For additional information on canvas replacements, be sure to visit their website at canvasreplacements.com. We hope you enjoyed this week's show. And for more information on anything you saw on the show, along with additional videos, stories, and RV news, visit our website at rollingontv.com. You can also find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Vimeo. 
As usual, this has been another fun production.